friends, it's good to be with you again. If you're in our area and would like to uh, visit with us uh, in person, you can do it at the Alfred campus, Angelica, Belmont, or Sayo. If you come, we will make you feel at home. I am the lead pastor. My name is Stephen Kroll. I serve with an amazing group of people who are dedicated to breaking down barriers and building bridges to the cross. We're in the season of Advent. Last week, we talked about hope. This week, our topic is peace. So let's pray. Wonderful, gracious Lord. I thank you for what you have done for us, how you prepared us for a life that you've given to us. Help us to realize that we live in a messy world and that there needs to be a sense of hope and now peace that we can begin to offer to those who are around us. We put this into your holy name. Amen. Well, last week we talked about coming home, and that coming home is multi-level. It's more than just the Christmas story with the baby. It's Jesus has been coming home ever since creation was put in place. And now yet, uh, we are to look at the, uh, the Christmas season as a stepping stone for what is yet to come. Jesus is still coming and we need to be ready for that. And be inviting others to the party. But this week, you know, we talked a little bit last week about my favorite thing, and that's the Hallmark Channel with the Christmas uh, movies and how they're so predictable. But that's what I like, is that they're predictable, that at the end, the message has come through. The conflict was resolved. And what we see in those stories is that there are messy situations with messy people. It's just the world we live in. It's messy. And uh, we have an opportunity within the church to help bring healing. There are some people who don't want to go home. There's conflict. There's anxiety. Other people just can't wait to get home, and that's awesome. But here's the thing. For us who are in the church, who associate with the church, we are regularly at home. But why is it that our attendance continues to go down? Why is it that when we put on special events, our children and our children's children aren't there. We have to almost bribe them to come anymore. Well, I think Luke uh, chats a little bit about this. And again, this is not your typical uh, Christmas scripture, but here's what I want you to do. Turn to the book of Luke, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, and I'm reading out of the New Revised Standard. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, the ruler over the region of Etruria, and Tecontius, and then Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Ananias and Sapphira. The word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. As it was written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the tough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. See, 
that's the message that's with us that we have normally heard out of that is prepare the way. But when we begin to read this today, there's something that, that has startled me for the first time. I've never really seen this before. John is starting out with, with saying there's chaos. There, there, there's conflicts. How do we know that? Well, he sets the stage by anchoring this whole story with who's in leadership, both politically and religiously. And both are creating problems and issues with the people at the local level. They're putting hardships on, and, and there, there is this, this pushback that they don't want that anymore. But John is saying, look, we've got to prepare the way. We, we've got to prepare the people for a series of repentance. So I think Luke is making a theological statement here. See, you got to understand these authors are not trying to work with history. Sometimes they're not really good writers either. But here's the theological statement that we need to understand God and we need to understand how God is interacting with humanity. So I think that Luke is placing John's message in the midst of the, uh, the crisis, the, the anxiety in which the people are facing. And so God could have given the message in multiple different ways, could have used all kinds of different individuals, but took a wild man out in the middle of the wilderness and began to teach the people about repentance, that there is still hope in the midst of it. John is trying to actually bring a sense of peace to the people by coming to the essence of what the problem is. The problem is not the politicians. The problem is not the church. The problem is in people's hearts. And so John is trying to, to bring this message to the people. And Luke is trying to tell the story about what John was doing, and this is how we are, are to react. I want to also look at one other piece of scripture. It's found in the book of Malachi. So if we thought that making peace was easy work, or, or as the first scripture said, to make a, a level playing field, well, here's Malachi and showing us that it's not easy but yet God is in the midst of it. Hear this from Malachi. See, I'm sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, like a fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. Here's the thought. So it's, it's replaying the idea that there's going to be a messenger that, that comes. But let's think about that. Here is a messenger that's coming. But Malachi is saying it's going to be like a refiner. And that, you know, the, the process of refining gold is a lot simpler than refining silver. Silver is something that that takes time. It takes an intimate relationship between the refiner and then the raw elements. And there's the heat and the fire of it. And I think part of what Malachi is saying here is that God loves us so much that God will be with us in the midst of our refining. See, that's what John was calling. John was calling for a repentance for people to, to get their hearts right. And isn't that still the case today? We need to have a starting point on how to have our lives really effective. And that's when our heart is right with God. That's when real peace, you know, we talk about peace on earth and we sing about peace on earth. But where does that peace 
begin. It says, the song says, let it begin with me. But it's beginning with me in the idea that I am developing a relationship with the triune God that is going to change my world. And my world is changed when God comes in and like a fire uh, takes away all of the stuff that doesn't belong there. It's, it's not an easy process, but it is a process that is transforming. It, 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 it's transformational. We, we become new. We become different. We become better than what we were. It doesn't change who we are, but how we look to others. The best of what we have begins to come out. The, the dross is pulled away. That's when peace begins to settle in. And when we have peace, we want to come home. Here's my message, the application, I believe, for us as the church. Look around. Our attendance has gone down. Our Christmas Eve services used to be wall to wall, and now we wonder how many people will really show up. We want to blame it on the coronavirus, but I'm telling you folks, it's been a long time since we had a wall-to-wall -wall service. I want you to begin to invite them for this year. Invite them to come home. Begin to make the pathways level for them. Help to give them a level playing field. I think we have become part of the problem. It's not that they're angry with God so much as I think they're angry with us. How do we humble ourselves to invite them to come back to really hear the message of God? How do we get them to have peace so that they will want to come home? Let's pray. Lord, we put this before you. We put our, our problems, our issues, some of the things that maybe have caused our children and our grandchildren to stay away, to, to be resistant to hearing the truth of what you have for us. Be the refining fire still in our lives so that we can provide peace and hope to the world that's around. We put this into your holy name. Amen. Folks, we're still in Advent. We'll be again next week. Tune in. And I do encourage you, come to one of our two Christmas Eve services. One will be in the Angelica uh, campus, and the other will be in Sio campus. And I'll give you the times and dates later. Talk to you later.